Hey everyone, I'm Alan Thrall, not at Untamed Strength Gym. I am here in my mansion, my palace. I'm gonna show you what I'm working with. Today I'm gonna show you my home gym. I have spent dozens of dollars on this home gym. And so, uh, you know, I got so many people asking me, hey Alan, show us the goods. So, here we go. This is it. I've got squat stands, barbells, plates, some dumbbells, a couple pieces of cardio equipment, um, and that's it. Nine times out of 10, I would rather train in a gym. I have a gym called Untamed Strength, if you didn't know. It's got every piece of equipment that I would ever need to train. So I would much rather train there. I also like the atmosphere. I also like getting away from home or, you know, you might like getting away from work just to have that separation of home life, work life, and gym. I much prefer a gym. But there are times when having this stuff in my garage is uh, very helpful. So I have a newborn baby at the house and uh, a three-year-old son. So there are times when I'm with them and I can't just leave and go to the gym. And I can't just take you know a toddler and a newborn in the gym and try to work out. So it is nice to be able to do it from home here. Or the baby might be asleep for a nap uh, and I can just come in here and do a quick workout, something like that. So this is convenient. Uh, again, I prefer training in a gym, but it is really nice to have this stuff. So let's, uh, let's explain all of it. Let's talk a little bit about it. So this, first off, the squat stands. This is gonna be helpful for squatting because I need the bar up high so I can put it on my back and squat. Um, what's different about these squat stands than some, I guess, older style, more traditional squat stands is the fact that they have these holes all the way down to the bottom. So you can uh, lower these J cups to a height that would allow you to bench press. I have an older pair of squat stands and they are only for squatting or overhead pressing because uh, they only go down to you know this this low. So this is nice that I can put the J hooks down low for, um, for benching. I guess if you want to do like rack pulls or set the bar off the ground, you could also do that if you had safeties. So these are nice, these are just rogue squat stands. They actually belong to the gym. Um, before I had uh, expanded and rearranged the strongman side of the gym, we were pressed for space. We didn't have uh, enough places to squat, enough squat, st uh, squat racks. So I had bought these um, portable squat stands so that we could just set up anywhere if someone needed to do it for overhead press or squat. But they're not really being used now that we have more squat racks in the gym, so they've just been stored in my house. Sometimes if we need portable squat stands, I will still bring them to the gym. Okay, enough about those. Um, a bench. This is a very cheap bench if you're talking about rogue fitness or a powerlifting uh, mobile bench. Um, I bought this for 30 bucks, I think. Right when the pandemic hit, I was just giving away a lot of my equipment to the members, letting them rent it out. And uh, there were a lot of people that didn't have a bench. So I was just collecting equipment from wherever I could on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. And even in the, in the store before prices skyrocketed, um, I found this and I let one of the members borrow it. And then he moved and returned it to me. It's doing nothing at the gym because we have better benches. So this has just been sitting in my garage. I will use this for bench press. Uh, but the thing about benching here, if I don't move all this stuff over, usually what I do is just set this down like that. Uh, just because I have room on this platform and I'll do bench press like this. So it's a slight incline, um, which is fine. Uh, I don't always have time or space or the energy to move everything off the platform. Um, you can also, I can also do some dumbbell bench and things like that with this, this bench. Um, I have done seated overhead press where I'll just go here. So the bench, bench is nice. Oh, uh, actually last week I did a seated or I did box squats with this. Here, something like this. I went down, right, and then back up. So I used it for box squats too. So it's, it gets used for more than just bench press. Um, let's talk, we'll talk about the platform last, next to last. Over here we got an assortment of barbells. So I've got one uh, barbell, one Olympic, 45 pound Olympic barbell. And it is a no name barbell. I got it years ago for Untamed Strength when I would just buy used equipment. I didn't really buy new stuff for the gym. Um, it is bent, so it is marked with red tape. It used to be an untamed strength. Anytime there's a bar that's damaged and untamed, 
because people are doing rack pulls with it or people drop it off their back after a heavy squat, they miss a squat or whatever, it slips off their back and it hits the pins, the safety pins, it'll damage the bar and bend it. So what I do with damage bars, I mark it with red tape and set them aside for designated rack pull bars. So if anyone wants to do rack pulls with untamed strength, they will use the, uh, the red bars, the bent bars. Uh, we have more than enough rack pull bars now, unfortunately. So I just brought one over and I use it in the, in the, uh, the old garage here. All right, and next, I've got this training bar. Um, I believe it's uh, 15 kilos, so 33 pounds. Um, I brought this mainly for uh, my wife. She doesn't do a whole lot of weight training here. She'd rather go to a gym and do it or just do like dumbbell stuff. But I brought this for her just in case she wanted to use it. She could do bench press or something if she didn't want to use a 45 pound bar. This is an axle bar because sometimes I like to do axle bar deadlifts or axle bar rows. Uh, and this, I don't think this one is, this is bent, uh, but this is an old crappy axle bar uh, from Untamed that I took. So this was homemade. This is actually, was purchased from Home Depot. It's just electrical conduit, pipe, metal pipe. Uh, and then some rings here, they were just welded on as collars. It was cut to whatever, seven feet, two inches or something, whatever an Olympic bar is. And it's a, an axle bar. So this is used in strongman. Uh, a lot of times the deadlift will be an axle bar deadlift. It's a thicker diameter than a barbell, so it's harder to hold on to. The sleeves don't rotate, it's a fixed bar. And it doesn't bend, it doesn't have any whip, it also doesn't have any knurling. So uh, sometimes I'll use this. Uh, I'm training for a competition that has an axle bar deadlift. So sometimes if I'm doing deadlifts, I'll just uh, uh, do them with this axle. So uh, about that, I forgot to mention at the start, if I'm stuck training here, I'm just gonna do very simple stuff. Squats, deadlifts, maybe some bench press, overhead press, uh, rows, maybe lunges and things like that. All of the specialized stuff, if I wanna use some machines or if I wanna do some strongman stuff and I need equipment, I'll just leave that for later in the week uh, when I'm at the gym. So just basic stuff I can do here. Next, plates. So let's talk a little bit about these plates. These plates used to be at Untamed Strength. There was a time when the gym was just full of random scattered plates that I acquired over years. I was able to, a few years ago, I was able to kind of consolidate all those plates and outfit the powerlifting gym with all matching plates. So they all have the matching calibrated Troy pound plates. And what I did with these ones was any of the, the singles, so any of the plates that didn't have a matching pair or that were just damaged, like this one, damaged plate, or any that had, uh, that were just wildly inaccurate. So I weighed the plates for a video and uh, some of them were up to 49 pounds, 45 pound plates up to 49 pounds. Some of them were light as like 41 and a half pounds. I don't think you need to go measuring your plates or weighing your plates. I just did it kind of for fun as a video and because I was getting rid of a lot of these plates. But anyways, these are the mismatched plates or the ones that were wildly inaccurate. And I marked them with red paint to designate them as machine plates only. So you would don't put these plates on a barbell, just use them for machines, leg press or something like that because the accuracy of your plates really doesn't matter and the symmetry of your plates doesn't matter if you're using a machine. So that's why these are marked with red. Once I kind of was past that and we had enough plates at the gym to move these, I actually moved them into my garage. So that's what they're here for. I have about 500 pounds of weight in here, which I really don't ever touch uh, in my garage. A big heavy session, I'd rather do it at the gym if possible. And, uh, but with that said, I think these are gonna go back to untamed strength pretty soon because the strongman yard, we need some plates, some junk plates out for the Conan's wheel and stuff like that. Uh, th plates that can get rained on and I don't really care. I also have some pound or, ki I'm sorry, kilo iron plates. So these are 33 pound uh, iron plates. These are 22 pound iron plates. Um, and uh, I don't put these in the, on the strongman side of the gym right now because people would lose their stuff if they saw a 33 pounder and a 35 pounder or something like that. So uh, people avoid using these plates anyways. I just brought them over here. Um, all right, some, uh, some dumbbells. So these are just crappy old dumbbells. I got a pair of 25s, 30s, 10s. So I might do some curls with these uh, or some, some lateral raises or front raises. Um, the 10 pounders, my wife can do some with it. We also have some fives here, but uh, I really don't like these plates, or I'm sorry, these dumbbells. So that's why they're not the gym. Like these ones are bent. They also always come loose like that. They can just screw on and off. So they're, uh, 
they work for me, but not for a, not for a commercial gym setting. Uh, what I do use more often now are these uh, Gongnir loadable dumbbells, and they have built-in collars. So these pop up, slide in. I made a YouTube video about it, I'll link it. These are ridiculously expensive, and there's no way in hell I would ever buy these for my garage gym. Um, they were sent to me. They said, hey, will you do a review of these if we send them to you? And uh, so anyways, they're at my home now because there's just no, there's no practical use for these and in, in at least at untamed strength. We have dumbbells, we have two sets of dumbbells. The sets go from five pounds up to 155 pounds, five pound increments. So there's no reason you would need to use this. But uh, they work, so you can load them up. Maybe you do want to do like circus dumbbell. I've done 155, careful now. I've done 155 pound uh, circus dumbbell with this in my garage. So it could work. Um, yeah, you just, let me show you how they work. These ones barely fit, but they fit. So you go here, slide it on. And then what I mean is this diameter is a little too big, but they stay on. So they do their job. That's it. Cobwebs. Okay. So these are my deficit deadlift blocks or uh, block pull blocks. And you think I'm joking, but I'm not. Uh, so you would stack them up here, stand on them, and do your deficit deadlifts. Or you could throw them out to the edge and do some block pulls. Got these at Target. Who knew Target had powerlifting equipment? We'll talk about the platform. So, <clears throat> this platform, one of the OG platforms that I made in 2015 with John, Punch Nugget Mead. Uh, we made these going into the second location of Untamed. You can see here the signature is still there. I don't throw all John, Punch Nugget Mead. Um, still haven't got rid of these. So, this is a deadlift platform and the reason I have it here is one, because it has uh, no other space. I don't need it in the current Untamed Strength Gym. Um, and it doesn't take up that much space. I obviously do use it here for deadlifts, but uh, I don't go heavy enough and I don't tend to slam my deadlifts. So this isn't absolutely necessary. I will say that if you are in your garage and you're deadlifting um, on bare concrete with iron plates and a barbell, I think it's a bad idea, unless you're going really light and you're controlling it. One, you're gonna damage your concrete floor. Two, uh, you're gonna damage the plates, just like that cracked plate. And three, you're gonna damage the barbell if it's constantly uh, smacking against the hard surface like that. So you could do just this, this is just a carpet uh, that I could deadlift on and get away with it. One, I don't deadlift very heavy in here. And two, I tend to uh, lower my weights uh, 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 under control anyways. And if you can deadlift something, if you can, st if you have the strength to stand up with a weight, you definitely have the strength to slowly lower it and control it. If you can pick 500 pounds up off the ground, you can lower it in three seconds down to the ground. You're not just going to drop it. Um, so honestly, the deadlift platform, not totally necessary. I just had it. So I put it here. Um, if I was really training seriously, hard and heavy for a powerlifting meet, Yes, I would definitely use, I would suggest this, but you can get away with this here. Um, or if you want, you can just get bumper plates and deadlift directly on the concrete floor. That works too. Okay, next, I'm gonna show you my cardio equipment. Cardio equipment that I don't use very often, but I have used it before. We've got a Concept 2 rower, which is strategically locked in place up here, just in case a three-year-old wants to try to climb on this, it's not going anywhere. Um, and then uh, an Aerodyne Pro Assault Bike. Both of these need some service. We have like four rowers at Untamed Strength. I've got four, three bikes, three Assault Bikes at Untamed. Um, so we don't really need these, that's why they're here. This one needs a new belt. It works, but when you go extremely fast or you, you go from slow to fast, sometimes the belt will slip. So I need to replace this belt. Um, and then this rower is fine. It's just once you when you pull it really hard, sometimes the chain feels like it slips. So these are two kind of broke, beaten up uh, pieces of cardio equipment from Untamed that I just brought into my garage. I think eventually they'll go back. The piece of cardio equipment that I use most, and if you don't 
know if you're not following me on Instagram, uh, I've been running a couple times a week and doing a couple races. And uh, so I, I prefer to run over doing this stuff. Uh, but my favorite piece of cardio equipment, this is, this is no cap. Let me show you. How's it look? Can you see that? Yep. This thing here, this is not a paid advertisement. Uh, Burley. Does it say anything else? Burley. Maybe if I find it online, I'll uh, link it. Because if you're a mom or a dad, you've got little ones, maybe even you're a dog parent and you want to put your dog in here. Uh, this thing is so smooth. I really, really like it. It's kind of expensive. I think it was like 300 bucks. But uh, what this is, you can fit two kids or two dogs in there. And uh, you, it's really, really smooth to run with. Sorry, I'm like stumbling over my words. But I've gone on three mile runs with this. And man, it is really smooth. If you get on a flat road, I'll actually run and then just let it coast and it'll keep rolling. And then, you know, every once in a while, I'll steer it if I need to. But I can just put my hands here. I can move this up and down to wherever I want to push. Uh, in fact, there's some gnarly hills around my house. And I'll usually put this about uh, waist height and just kind of run like this. And then uh, once I get to a up a really heavy hill or a really uh, tall hill, I'll move this here, push mode engaged, and I'll push up the hill like that. But this thing is really, really smooth, and it turns on a dime, so smooth. Um, and again, very, very easy to use. So you can run with it with one hand, really. Um, and then the front there, this connects to your bike. Um, so you would take the wheel off and connect that to your bike and then tow it behind. My bike is at the gym right now, but uh, that would be my fourth piece of cardio equipment is my bike. But uh, yeah, this thing's really smooth. If you like running or biking and you want to pull kid along, this thing's very smooth. It's got the, uh, let's cover it up for the rain. That's it. Um, oh yeah, there we go. Yep, good call. Uh, so I have rings here um, and I'll do pull-ups with these. Sometimes I'll lower them down and I'll do uh, flies or I'll do rows. Uh, but usually I'll use it for pull-ups. So this is actually, why are they set like this? This is my top secret uh, rope climb exercise. So I feel like this helps for rope climb or a flag hoist in a strongman. Uh, but when you do a rope climb, you have your hands staggered. So I was doing staggered pull-ups. So you go like this. You go here, I'll do a set of five, and then switch, set of five. So that's, a, that's the stagger form. Sometimes I'll just use these. I was actually doing it yesterday. I'll just jump up and grab the, the wood there and do pull-ups like that, which I actually prefer probably most. I do have something else, come on over here. Up here. But this is a old pull-up bar that goes to a rack uh, from the gym. And I just put it up here and I can do pull-ups with it, um, just like that. But the hard part about it is that it moves, it rolls around, so doing a, uh, like a static hold while the bar is moving in your hands is really, really hard. So I'll do that sometimes for grip training. I'll just hang here and this thing rolls around so it's very difficult. Uh, but yeah, that's my, uh, those are my pull-up uh, implements. I'm Adam Paul, your neighborhood cellar dweller. Thanks for watching and always remember, Tread on time!